Hey, um, you know, yesterday was a brutally cold day. There were people out there in tents. We were running out of firewood. It was cold. It was hard. Some referred it as uh, our version of Valley Forge. I kind of like that, you know. Yesterday I saw people come together to make sure that the families with kids were taken care of and warm all night. I saw people walking the grounds right beside me, making sure that the folks in the tents had a warm place to sleep tonight. The people that were in cars, if they so chose to take hotel rooms to stay warm overnight, to get showers. I saw people sharing rooms with people that they didn't even know to get showers couple hours of sleep in the warmth. I saw people shuttling each other to restaurants to just get out of here and take a break for a moment and sit down and, and, and sit at a table and place an order. I saw truckers get out of their trucks and walk up on the hill with me to check up on those in tents and give money right out of their pocket to make sure that they got a hotel room. I saw people with cars shuttling people back and forth I saw this community stand up together and make sure that everyone was healthy and safe and taken care of. Every time I walk around here, I'm reminded why I'm doing what I'm doing. Every time I see your faces, shake your hands. You got it, bro, you got it. it. I'm reminded why I'm doing this. And what started with me doing this for my children, for my girls back home, my family, has increased to doing this for all of you. You have a big family. I started off doing this for me and my family. And I guess it still is. It's just my family got a heck of a lot bigger. That's right. I know that I know that there are some hard days with this. And I know that there's people questioning where we're going from here. I know there's people that got to pack up and go home and go to work. There's people that got to get home to their kids and to their families. To those people that got to do those things, I understand it. And I love you, and I respect your decision, and I still stand with you side by side any day of the week, any any month, any any year going forward because you were here and you were a part of this. Those of you that got to go home, though, I, I request one thing, and that's that you go home and you share this story, that you tell the world what this was like, yes. that you continue to spread this message, and when you go home, don't compete against others to organize your state. Work with others to yeah. organize your state. Yeah. Doesn't matter who they are. Organize your state and get to your state capitals. If it takes you a month, it takes you a month. If it takes you three months, it takes you three months. But the point is, organize. Make your state understand. Make your state-level legislators understand that they work for us. The time, is, the time has shown that this isn't an easy road, that this is difficult. But from Adelanto, California to here in Hagerstown and around the Beltway, I know that we're not alone. I know that the American people feel the same exact way and it doesn't matter if they're a liberal or a conservative, they feel the same way. We have all had enough of this. We have all had enough of them not listening to us. We have all had enough of the divide that politicians and the media continue to try to do to us. Amen. Yesterday I met with a small group of individuals here that lean to the left side of the aisle. And they're here with the same exact message of those of you that lead to the right side of the aisle. Good. Thank you, Lord. We are all one family. Amen. We are all one yes. people. Yes. With one goal. Yes. 
And it's not just the American people, it's the Canadian people as well. Today I got to speak with some, uh, an, 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 an individual that was in Ottawa, in person, and he was relaying messages to me from the leadership, the groups of the people that organized Canada, and we talked openly about the struggles that they had and the struggles that we have. In the end, we took a picture and I sent a message back with him to let them know that we got their back and we care and we love them and thank you for the inspiration that they set upon us. They're still in jail, those organizers. There's one or two that might have got out, but there's others that are still there. Pastor Art is still in jail for doing nothing illegal but speaking the gospel. That has happened before. It is a fear tactic to the Canadian people so that they won't stand up anymore. I don't talk about January 6th too often for obvious reasons, but I do believe it's the exact same tactic. It's the same exact tactic. And the Canadian government is doing that to the Canadians now. If they fear, if they can, can make you doubt what you're doing, if they can scare you into standing up, they're going to. Because the scariest thing, not only for the United States government, but for governments around the world, the scariest thing is when the people of their nation stand together. They need you to be divided. They need you to not like each other. They need to pit race against race. They need it for them to stick to their agenda, to fatten their pockets with their special interests, to not truly represent the people, but what they want so that their family keeps getting the silver spoon. So that their personal business gets to make cabinets forever. So that they can control the trucking in their state. We're not having that anymore. Thank God. Governor of Pennsylvania, Governor Wolf is a prime example of that problem. He is an exact, exact, exact example of that problem. Now why I don't endorse candidates personally, technically, I do offer a platform and am willing to allow people running for office to speak. I will give them that option to speak to the people because the people deserve to hear from those individuals. And if they can, if they can truly represent the people around the nation or their state, and they understand that we the people, that the people's convoy, we'll hold them accountable. Whether we live in their state or not, we will call them out if they fail to represent the people. And that includes anybody that takes the stage here. And I think you all understand that from the attorney generals that have spoken to the senators that have already spoken, we will hold you accountable. So if you come up on this stage and you say you're going to do something, as I've said many times, and this time I'm going to let the crowd do it, it's time that they are reminded that they were.